like to um, just pray and I'm so excited. We've always been excited at what God is doing here and what he has for this local body. But never before have I been on such tiptoe expectation. Mm -hmm. And it's like Lynn was saying, it's, it's like you're waiting to fall over the edge. And we really are. And it's not a bad fall over the edge thing. It's a good thing. Mm -hmm. So I want to encourage you. I'm going to ask you to do something very weird, very strange. Yes. I'm asking you please not to hurt yourselves. But and I don't know why God told me to do this. He said, they have to do something different. He says, I want you to take you to higher places. <laughs> so, Scott Cruz, you do not have to do this, but you can lift your hands. <laughs> All those of you that can and will not hurt yourselves, please stand. Stand on your chair and lift your hands as high as you can. On the I'm chair. Not gonna stand on the no. chair. Do not hurt yourself. No. Do not. I don't want to be sued. Stand, 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 stand on the edges. Now reach up. God is taking us higher. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Way, way higher than you can ever Woo! think, Woo! believe, or imagine. Yes. Now, push the ceiling off because I hate it. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. He's got you, did it? Yeah, he's yeah. Yeah. Oh, God is so good. Amen. Your kids are not allowed to do this God on their phone. God is so good. <laughs> I am just so excited at what God is doing. Don't you feel better already just doing that? Amen. Oh, God is good. So I'm going to get Samuel to read a scripture for me just now. But I just, this table is not here anymore. It doesn't exist, but I need it for an illustration. And I'm going to ask you, Sam, can you fill this jar with these stones, please? With the stones. There's, there's no, there's no, ooh, 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 magic, magic. Just fill. Yeah, that's All of them? Till the top. Till it fills. Go Sam. Go Sam. Go Sam. If it breaks, it doesn't matter. The illustration's on. Oh, my God. Okay. There we go. Thank you, Samuel. Okay, so this, I needed a few more stones. Let's do this. And I'm going to ask you, is this full? No. no. <laughs> Who says it's full? Well, it's full and it's full, eh? Good. You guys are good. Is it full? No. 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 Okay. Is it full? No. Okay. Do this. Now we're getting it. Is it full? Not yet. Not yet. Almost. It seems to be. I'll stop before it does. What What I'm speaking on today is first things first. If I had put the water, the sand, and these other little stones in here, these bigger stones would not have fit. I had to put the bigger ones in first in order for everything else to be put in. Yeah. This is exactly what we need to do with our lives with God. First things first. God has to be put into our lives first in order for everything else to be put in so that we can be filled. If you do it the other way around, there's no room for God yeah. because he's too big. So if you remember anything today, remember this. It's him first. And I love last night was first things first. There's a song that we sang this morning. It said, I want to seek you first. And I appreciate the team this morning. Thank you. You're a great team. Thanks, Felipe. Thank you, Jane. Thank you, all of you. So I'm going to ask Samuel, the, the scripture that I'm reading today is from one of the second smallest by, um books in the Bible and it's Haggai. I'm going to ask him to read from chapter 1 verses 2 to 14 and I'm going to base the teaching off that. I want you to know I'm not going to go long but I want you to get the point this morning. This is what the Lord of Heaven's army says. The people are saying the time has not come to rebuild the house of the Lord. Then the Lord sent this message through the prophet Haggai. Why are you living in luxurious houses while my house lies in ruins? 
This is what the Lord of Heaven's army says. Look at what's happening to you. You have planted much, but harvest little. You eat, but are not satisfied. You drink, but are still thirsty. You put on your clothes, but you cannot keep warm. Your wages disappear as though you were putting them in pockets filled with holes. This is what the Lord of Heaven's army says. Look at what's happening to you. Now go up into the hills, bring down timber, and rebuild my house. Then I will take pleasure in it and be honored, says the Lord. You hoped for rich harvest, rich harvest, but they were poor. And when you brought your harvest home, I blew it away. Why? Because my house lies in ruins, says the Lord of Heaven's armies, while all of you are busy building your own fine houses. It's because of you that the heavens withhold the dew and the earth produces no crops. I have called for a drought on your fields and hills, a drought to wither the grain and grapes and olive trees and all of your other crops, a drought to starve you and your livestock and to ruin everything you have worked so hard to get. Then Zerubbabel, son of Sheltiel, and Jeshua, son of Jehoshaphat. I just put then the leaders. Then the leaders, <laughs> the high priest, and the whole remnant of God's people. Good thing there's no spelling test in his kingdom, right? And God's people began to obey the message from the Lord their God. They began to obey the message from the Lord their God. Mm. When they heard the words of the prophet Haggai, whom the Lord their God had sent, the people feared the Lord. Then Haggai, the Lord's messenger, gave the people this message from the Lord. I am with you, says the Lord. Yo. Yeah. I am with you, yeah. says the Lord. Ooh, just yeah. let that sink in, man. Yeah. Yeah. I am with you, says the Lord. So the Lord sparked the enthusiasm of Zerubbabel, the, leader. the leaders, <laughs> and the enthusiasm of Jeshua, another leader, the high priest, and the enthusiasm of the whole remnant of God's people. They began to work on the house of the God, of their God, the Lord of Heaven's army. Thank you, Sarah. Amen. Thank you. Oh, I love that. Yeah. I am with you, says the Lord. I'm going to give you a little bit of a background. There's a guy, E.M. Gray, and he spent his life searching the one trait of all successful, that all successful people share. The conclusion was not hard work, not good luck, not wise human relations, although these qualities are very important. I'm going to read what he put. The one factor that exceeded all the rest was the habit of putting first things first. He observed, the successful person has the habit of doing the things that failures don't like doing. They don't like doing them either, necessarily, but their disliking is secondary to the strength of the purpose. So I'm gonna tell you, our life in order to succeed is first things first. What is the first thing? What does Matthew say? Seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. Seek first. Then all these things shall be added to you. All of them. We need to turn the house right side up. Instead of seeking the all things in order to get him, we need to seek him. Put first things first. And you know that it's God, if you look at... You have to go and read that, the, the whole of Haggai, and you'll see that Solomon's, the temple of Solomon had been destroyed. It was in ruins. God's people had come through to the land. I think it was 35 years. I'm not too sure. I read it just somewhere. 70 years later, Babylon had destroyed Jerusalem, and Solomon's temple was gone. And when the Jews returned out of exile, they saw that the building was desolate. So these people had come. They'd settled. They'd seen that God's house was in ruins. And what they did is they started to establish their own homes, their own buildings, their own businesses. Nothing wrong with that. And the scripture says that it started to flourish, but what would happen is they would get stuff coming in, but it was never enough. They would drink, but were thirsty. Mm -hmm. There was like this bottomless hole of pouring in, but it just seeping out. So what happens is Hagar comes to the body, to the, to the people, and he says, you have neglected the house of God. And the scripture says that some of them had gone, that the first lot of settlers had gone and pulled the weeds away and started to clear the building. But then they got weary. And then in the scripture, it talks about how they had paneling in their own homes. Mm -hmm. That was parallel to, it wasn't that they literally had panels. If you study the scripture, 
It's that they had built their houses and built their houses well, but now they were adorning them with everything else. So their focus was on their own homes, their own things, and they had neglected the house of God. And how much does that parallel with what we see today? Mm-hmm. Is where we have God the Father, His family, the kingdom, but people are so busy building, and there's nothing wrong with having good homes. There's nothing wrong with having a good business. You need to. But it, when it takes the place of God Almighty, and you put your business first, you put your family first, you put your children first, you put your wife first, who needs to be first? God. I, I, is that some of you? Who needs to be first? God. God. Amen. It's really difficult though, isn't it? God needs to be first. So he had to send the prophet. And he said that I want you to start rebuilding the house of God. When you do that, everything else will fall into place. And you will see the prosperity. We have to adjust and align ourselves to where we are seeking first. First things first. Amen? Mm-hmm. Amen. So as the years passed, um, I'm just going to read this. Israel had got used to not having the temple. You've got to understand that. I'm going to read this. Homes were built, stores were opened, commerce was established, fields planted, crops were harvested, and life began to resemble normalcy. But Israel, however, got used to life without the temple. They got used to life without God. They got used to life without fellowshipping. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to challenge you. How many of you have got used to life without fellowshipping? Mm -hmm. Because you're too busy Mm -hmm. building the business, taking care of the kids. I I loved what Lynn said last night. You've got eight children, Lynn. You need a medal. (laughs) She's got eight beautiful children. She never, and let me tell you, I never, I know Maria never, I never used my children as an excuse not to do what God called me to do. Never. My children never, I never, we never sacrificed our children for the work of the ministry, ever. But we taught our children to sacrifice. So I'm encouraging you. This is not a beating, this is an encouragement. Because you will be a happier person. Yeah. And we'll get to the excuses just now. So it's a message of priority, putting first things first. The temple was the center for worshiping God. It represented the heart and the soul of the Old Testament. Although God is everywhere, the temple was the place on earth where God dwelt in a special sense. In the temple, to lie, sorry, for the temple to lie in ruins was to neglect the worship of God. It was a testimony of misplaced priorities. So I'm going to ask you just to take a little second and focus on you. Where do you have misplaced priorities in your life? And I know I had dinner with my sweet friend Gina and we had to sit and really dialogue and challenge each other because we have misplaced priorities. And the enemy will always make sure there's something to pull you away from what God has you to do. Always. It's up to us to choose. Amen? Amen. Amen. So you like this message, huh? Amen. Yes, of course. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'm going to give you practical steps for putting first things first. I, I like to teach. I like to give practical steps. The first one is stop making excuses. And I love what my sister Dee said. She did a teaching. This generation is a generation of excuses. We're out protesting because we don't like the results. Well, deal with it. Honestly. You know, teach your kids to deal with disappointment. It's not an external thing where I've got to go and throw rocks at someone's building to demonstrate I'm frustrated. I agree there's frustration. I don't have a problem if you want to protest, but do it in the right spirit. Deal with the inner issues in an inner way, not an outward. Mm -hmm. Amen. And we've got a generation today that the parents have not allowed them to cope with disappointment. Mm -hmm. They've told you you're good at everything. Let me tell you, you're not good at everything. And I don't mind not being good at everything. 
Yeah. I went to a conference. I spoke at Church on the Rock at a ladies' conference. Yeah. And they wanted me to do an art class. <laughs> Three art. sessions of art class. I can't even do a stick figure and you can tell me what it looks like. <laughs> so I said to this one, I'm, not, I'm certainly not doing that one. So her response was, you need to make yourself uncomfortable and do things that are not comfortable and stretch yourself. I said, sister, trust me, my whole life is doing stuff I don't want to do. I said, I'm not going to add another thing. So I didn't do the art club. <laughs> you don't have to be good at everything. Isn't that so relieving and wonderful? Yeah, right. That that she shared with Rod. Rod can't, he doesn't have the shoulders to carry everything because he's not supposed to. That's right. That's right. Every single one of you has a gift and a part to play. Put him first and watch all of that come together and form the most beautiful picture. But even I might be able to paint in heaven. Who knows? <laughs> I mean, I look at AJ and Megan. I mean, AJ is a photographer. Then his wife takes pictures almost as good as him, and then I take pictures, and I'm like, how do you do this? <laughs> but it doesn't matter. Amen? Accept who you are, but stop making excuses. And here in Haggai, verses 1 and 2, it says, The Lord of hosts says, he says this to the people. These people say, the time has not come for the house of the Lord to be rebuilt. They intended to build God's house, but just hadn't got around to it. If you were to ask them about it, they would probably say, I'm all for building the temple. Let's do it. It's a great cause. But God wants us to take care of our families first. That's the excuse. <laughs> Times are hard, jobs are scarce. We need to, to pray about it some more. We will eventually build it, but not now. I'm too busy. I'm building my business. I have three children, I'm pregnant, I'm this, I'm that. There is never, ever an excuse to put God first, ever. So can we close that chapter? Amen. I'm going to give you an example. Billy Sunday defined an excuse as a skin of reason stuffed with a lie. Yeah. That's, That's what an excuse is. A skin of reason stuffed with a lie. Benjamin Franklin wrote, I never knew a man who was good at making excuses who was good at anything else. <laughs> it's easy to make excuses when you don't want to obey God. Is that the truth? And I want to tell you, I'm, I've made lots of excuses, but I won't anymore. And I'm, I'm just going to, I feel prompted by Holy Spirit to share this. We have a capacity and everybody's capacity is different. But I'm telling you, the body of Christ, we used to be stretched. We didn't have a choice. When I first got saved, I remember Don Norman telling me, this was my discipleship and I thank God for it. You read this Bible from cover to cover, front to back, you believe it and you do it. That was it. That was my discipleship. So I did it. We went to everything, did everything, nearly burn out, but we did it, but I'm grateful for it. Because it made us that kind of person. When Nathan was, Daniel was one and a half, Nathan was two and a half. We left Zimbabwe and we flew and we came to America for nearly a year. We traveled with our kids. We went everywhere with our children. We went out to meetings. The kids slept on the floor. We were helping Robert Slearden with his ministry. We lived with him for a couple of months. And I'm so grateful mm -hmm. that my children grew up with that, that they can't make excuses. Mm -hmm. And I know this might come as a bit of a heavy, but I'm challenging you parents. Come on. Yeah. Let that gifting that's within you soar I'm not saying sacrifice your children, but I'm saying teach your children to sacrifice. Yeah. Amen? So this doesn't grow up as another cupcake generation. Yeah. Yeah. So, sorry about that, but I had to put that out there. Good. Um, you know, there's never a right time. We can always find justification for not doing what God wants us to do. The time's not right. I've got family. I've got responsibility. My kids need me now. When things settle down at work, then I can do something. Now, I'm not telling you to neglect your children. Please hear me. I don't believe in that. You love your children. You look after them. You nurture them. You care for them. But I'm telling you, don't them, let them be brought up like spoiled brats that yeah. get their own way all the time. 
Amen. Amen. Let's go back to what the word says. That's another thing. Uh -oh. When Adam and Eve, <laughs> oh, no, I have to. <laughs> With Adam and Eve, it was do not eat. Everything's good, but do not eat of the tree of good and knowledge, evil. Of good. knowledge of good and evil. What is it? Well, I need a Bible, please. What is it today that this generation go to Google? To find out how to raise your children, what to do with your children, how to do this, how to do that, to where Google supersedes, supersedes this mm. yeah. knowledge. It's a generation that goes and gets knowledge upon knowledge upon knowledge upon knowledge. And I'm telling you, this one will tell you, Google says this is what you must do. Now, I can agree with you 100%, but I can go to Google and find contradicting to what you've there and validate a point. Yeah. Generation, this is our final authority. Amen. What does the Word of God say? Yeah. Amen? Amen? Not Google. I'm so tired of Google when people... I get... The, anyway, I'm not going there. <laughs> Especially as a grandma. Come on, guys. Ooh. Seriously, let's go to the Word of God and let the Word of God yeah. be our standard. Mm -hmm. Amen? I'm not opposed to Google, but when Google is your vein and your lifeline, right. apart from this, you're in deep trouble because you haven't put Him first. Yeah. Amen? Mm -hmm. So do all your parents still love me? Yes. Yeah. 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 I don't care anyway. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Let's put first things first. The second thing. I'm just, I was hoping Natalie would be here today, but she said, Mommy, I, I can't bear to come and then say goodbye to everybody again. You know, it's, our life is just full of goodbyes. But for Natalie, she applied last year to get into PA school. Guess how many responses she got? She applied to 11 universities. Guess how many responses she got? Wow. Last year? Zero. Zero. Wow. Nothing. She was so disappointed. And I can remember Rod and I sitting with her saying, Natalie, put first things first. Put God first and say, God, what is it that you have for my life? What is it that I need to do to get to where you want me to be? So she did it. This year, she applied at 11. Mm -hmm. Guess how many she heard from? 11. 11. She didn't get accepted into one. She's been accepted into nine others, and she goes for an interview tomorrow and the next day at UF. Wow. Because she put God first. Yeah. Mm -hmm. God first. Mm -hmm. The year before, she was trying to put everything else in and then put God in. It doesn't work that way. Right. Amen. So okay. I just I was going to get yeah. her to share that, but she's not here. So thanks, Natalie, for watching. And hi to all the South African people watching. Yeah. It's so nice that because we have it live, you see people pop up, and we've got lots of friends from South Africa, California, England. So hello, if you, wave coastal to everybody on there. All right, the second one. Stop being selfish. I'm not going to go on for long. Haggai challenged the people's selfish behavior. He said, "The word of the Lord came through Haggai the prophet." It is time for you yourselves not to live in your paneled homes while this house lies in ruins. And then I shared what it represented. The homes were complete while the temple remained in ruins. And God wants us to build that temple. Amen? Amen. It's easy to drift away from God's agenda to your own. Very easy. And that's why we need the one and others. Um, I'm going to skip out that. Number three is don't, don't miss God's blessings. When we put God first, we do not miss out on his blessings. Haggai 1 verses 5 and 6, it says, Now the Lord of hosts said, Think carefully about your ways. Think carefully. When last did you think carefully about your ways? You have planted much but harvest little. You eat but never have enough to be satisfied. You drink but you never have enough. You put on the clothes but you never have enough to get warm. He says, seek first the kingdom of God. My own selfishness will cause me to miss out on God's blessings. And I don't want to miss on his blessings. Amen? Amen. I'm going to give you a sobering reminder of what Haggai says. What happens in your heart affects every part of your life. The people have pushed God out of the center. And as a result, they suffered in every area. So what happens in your heart affects everything in your life. Make sure you put him first. So that was Matthew 6, 33, where it's seek first the kingdom of God. Then number four, take time to evaluate. Haggai, verses 1, 5, and 7, twice in the same 
um, paragraph, he says this to us. The people realized they had caused their own calamities. Twice Haggai instructed the, instructed the people, consider your ways. So I'm going to ask you today, because of Holy Spirit, not because of me, and because of what God wants to do and where he has positioned us and where he has positioned you, <coughs> sit before Father. This is not a religious thing. This is not about the do's and the don'ts. Sit before Father. Consider your ways and put first things first. Amen? Amen? We need to take time to evaluate. Socrates wrote, the unexamined life is not worth living. I want to be examined. I want to be measured. And every day we need to evaluate our lives. If God is not first, guess who removed him from, the, from you in the first place? It's not God. The failure to take the proper precautions today will result in severe consequences tomorrow. Let's take care of today. And this is what happens when God is first in our hearts and first in our lives. Haggai verses 1 to 8, it says, We are active in the right things. Just for time's sake, you can go and read that again. But we are active in the right things. So I ask you, are you active in the right things? I don't want to get to the end where um, that scripture, Matthew 6, but I'll get to that one. Number B, God is glorified. We should, the temple, we should be the temple of God and he needs to be glorified. And C, God blesses us. Hosea 1.13, he says, I am with you. When you put God first, you experience a new awareness of his presence. And that is true blessings. Amen? Amen. When you put him first. And I'm going to end with reading this. And I love the scripture from the message. But I'm going to read it. First in a different translation, Matthew 6 verse 19. It says, Do not accumulate for yourselves treasures on earth, where moth and rust destroy, and where thieves break in and steal. But accumulate for yourselves treasures in heaven, where moth and rust do not destroy, and thieves do not break in and steal. For where the treasure is, there your heart will be also. But now I want to read it from the message. I love this translation. And let's personalize it to us. If God gives such attention to the appearance of wildflowers, most of all which are never seen, don't you think he'll attend to you, take pride in you, and do his best for you? His best for you. What I'm trying to do here is get you to relax, Rod Palmer. Yes. <laughs> to not be, this is not the part of you. To not be so preoccupied with getting so that you can respond to God's giving. People who don't know God and the way he works fuss over these things. But you know both God and how he works. And this is the best. Steep your life in God reality, God initiative, and God provisions. Don't worry about missing out. Don't worry about missing out. We have a generation that doesn't want to miss out on nothing. Don't worry on missing out. You'll find all your everyday human concerns will be met. Give your attention, your entire attention, to what God is doing right now. And don't get worked up about what may or may not happen tomorrow. God will help you deal with whatever hard things come up when the time comes. And I want you to know, as hard as it was to hear the results of my sister's scan, I was so steadfast because I know, I know my God, but I knew I was carried and covered by His grace, His immeasurable grace. And my husband was so sweet. He's learned. He came to me and he asked me, how are you doing emotionally? How are you feeling? Are you okay? Are you okay to preach? Are you? He was so sweet because he went through, I mean, he got 10 out of 10. That's what most women want. Not how are you? Fine, okay. He wanted to know how I was emotionally. How are you? And honestly, I was fine. I don't like the result, but I look at him and I know that God is good. Amen. I know that God is faithful. Yes. And as long as I keep him first place in my life, all these things will follow. 
don't borrow from the enemy. It's like Dee said, when they gave her the results, she didn't go and Google it to find out what they said because she didn't want to take unwanted worry and put it in her life yeah. right now. Yeah. I have self-diagnosed myself many times and got myself into such concern. Yeah. <laughs> For what? Yeah. Seek first. Just turn and seek first the kingdom of God and His righteousness. And all of these things will be added unto you. Amen? Amen. Amen. And I want you to know, I, I'm not teaching you something you don't know, but I implore you, implore you, with everything I have to reevaluate your lives. And let's take that ship and let's go in the direction that God has for us. You will be way more content. All of you that have no time will end up having time. Those that are frustrated will end up no longer frustrated. It's if your shoulder's out just a little bit, your whole body feels it. Manipulate that shoulder back into place what happens? You've aligned your shoulder. We need to align our lives back with God first, <coughs> then everything else. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to ask one question. How many of you grew up with the teaching, God first, husband second, was it kids third, yeah. job yeah. fourth? Yeah. How church, many of you grew up with that? Yeah. Church five. Church was number five. Yeah. Did you grow up? I grew up with that. It's the biggest load of hogwash. That's right. yeah. You don't see it in scripture. Scripture says, seek first the kingdom. One thing's first. King. Yeah. And everything else is added. Mm -hmm. So if my children need me, but I have a commitment here, and I've made that commitment, I say, sorry, kiddies, I'll get back to you, but this is my commitment. Mm -hmm. Amen? Amen? Seek first the kingdom of God. Amen. Samuel, you had something you wanted to share? I'm okay. 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 I'm okay. Okay. Lynn, do you have anything you want to share, you two? I just want us to pray. Just musicians. Hmm? Musicians. Yeah. Jen, if you could come up and sing that second song, please. I really loved it where he says, I want to seek you first. <coughs> Amen. How many of you want to just, <coughs> God be first? Yeah. Just be first. And you know what's great? If God's first, then we're all winners. We all come first. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Father, I thank you. For this incredible time i thank you for the breakthroughs that we've had i thank you that for god loved coastal so much that he sent lynn and dale to come and to just add and break and declare set and establish things father i'm so grateful for the giftings I'm so grateful that Coastal belongs to a bigger family. Yeah. Father, I thank you that you just take each one of our hearts and let us evaluate our lives. And Lord, just to make that slight adjustment to put you first, and then everything else falls into place. Father, let us not neglect the house of God. Mm. But Father, to seek you first, to place you on the rightful place in our lives. Mm -hmm. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Thank you, Jim. <coughs> <coughs> While we sing that, uh, we're going to sing that song, the second one. If you have any prayer needs, we just have the prayer team, if you could just come and stand up here and just... Honestly, we want to we wanna be able to allow God to be first to deal with your situation. If there's things that you need to talk about to God about aligning Him, uh, aligning Him to be first, the Bible says repent. That, 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 that word just means I'm going to change my mind. What was now second, I'm going to put first. What was dominating my life is not no longer. And, and that's basically just the simplest thing out to make that adjustment. And the Father will meet you where you're at. But if there's, there's things that you, you, He's taking you away, concerns, financial, health-wise, loved ones. The Bible says where two agree touching anything, it's done by our Father in heaven. The prayer team are available to stand in agreement with you and speak faith, speak life, 
speak hope, say yes and amen with you, and put him first and watch the things align as God adjusts, as God comes and meets you where you're at. So don't sit in your seat. Come forward while we sing and say, can you agree with me with this? Or can, can you just stand with me as we pray there? Or can you pray for this? Because I just, I, just, I just need somebody to agree with me. Take advantage of it, church, because that's what, that's what happens. It makes you more productive for the week. It makes you more of, of the kingdom people that we need to be as we walk out into the highways and the byways. So let's just get, get, get that as we, as we just sing the song. Come up forward. And I just want to give you that opportunity in Jesus' name.
seek you first. I want to love you, Lord. I want to give you the honor you deserve. So I'll bow before you. I am overcome by the beauty of this perfect It's a good day. It's a great day. It's just begun. So I want to bless you, pray for you, and release you, and uh, allow them to carry on. If you still feel like you need ministry, you come up and get prayed for. Father, thank you. Thank you for family. Thank you for family time. Thank you for family victories. Thank, thank you, Father, that we would go out and know that you are first. Yet you are the great shepherd that leads us beside still waters and into pastures green. And Father, thank you that you guide our steps, that you're the lifter of our heads, oh, that you're the wind beneath our wings, and you're the same yesterday, today, and forever, and we thank you for that, in Jesus' name. God bless you, have a great week, enjoy the fellowship, we have coffee and all sorts of eats.